So I want to give you guys a little bit of an overview on my progress that I'm making on the Market Monkey trading terminal, which is a prop trading terminal, real time, but also supports other time frames, and it's completely written in Go. Backend, frontend, all go. And I recently separated the backend from the frontend. I also made uh, made it so that we can use it as a desktop app, but we can also use it as a web application uh, because we can compile it to WebAssembly. The backend, which is running on these actors, is completely distributed, right? So I'm running multiple services that can discover each other and it's it's pretty cool and the nice thing is that i'm actually selling this application as a one-time payment right so you don't need to subscribe and you can just buy it and you will have uh, ownership of a piece of software again pay once and you get the source code as well and you own it so if you want to learn how this is being built you can just check the link down in the description you will get invited to this course there are also some videos where i explain uh, the concepts and how it all works so you can actually understand it way better so the first thing we have is basically let me draw you can see that perfectly fine this is actually the app right which is you can call it the front end right could be web assembly could be desktop in our case and right now we have three services running which is basically three actor processes three actor runtimes that can run on different vps's but uh, you can also just run them on different ports on the same server depends on what you want so it doesn't really matter they can discover each other so the first thing we have is basically um, a store. And the storage is basically Postgres with timescale DB. Every data structure we need to save is going to be stored on a time series of the one minute. So we can scale it up to five minutes and, and one hour, one month with timescale DB. Pretty amazing, uh, works pretty fine. The following service we have is basically, um, actually there are multiple, but right now I'm running one and that's the consumer, right? And the consumer basically is um, what connects to the exchanges, right? Because we're gonna have uh, data here, right? And this data coming in from the exchange. This uh, layout is the Binance F BTC USD, but you can also, for example, use ETH. And now we are running Ethereum, right? So that's all Binance futures, okay? So this consumer basically gets WebSocket data in from the exchange. So this consumer is a separate service because um, it's tracking the order books and all that stuff. So it's pretty heavy. And if you want to run multiple consumers, for example, for Bybit or Coinbase or some Forex data, we can basically just uh, spawn new consumers on different servers or on different ports or whatever. So we don't need to take them down all at once, right? So right now one consumer and it's being subscribed to the WebSocket, uh, that's that. And the next thing we have is basically a server, right? I call it server, why? because this server actually is responsible for authentication and for connecting the client, the application to the rest of the system. So how does it work is very simple, right? So let me show you, for example, let's say I'm gonna spin up uh, a new widget, for example, the trades for BDC, right? You can see that it spawns up a new panel widget, which subscribes to the trades stream of Binance Bitcoin. <clears throat> so each time, we spawn up this widget, actually, that's fine. It's gonna be the uh, trades widget, for example, trades, right? So what's gonna happen is that this is going to subscribe to the application. It's gonna say, hey, give me, I wanna subscribe to the stream trades. So that's going to go to the app. The app is basically connecting to the server with a session, which is gonna spawn up a session actor, SA, session actor, and What's gonna happen is that this server knows, oh, this client wants to subscribe to Binance Trades Bitcoin. It's going to find on the cluster, the consumer that's responsible, right? The consumer that's responsible of that data, which is in this case, this consumer. And this consumer will basically just uh, say, okay, you wanna have more trades, no problem. It's gonna respond to the server with a stream of trades and the server will basically send that back to the application. Right? And the application knows, oh, this is trades. Who is interested? What kind of widgets are interested into these trades? Aha, this widget here, and it's going to multiplex that to that trade widget. And the same goes, for example, if you wanna have an order book <coughs> information, order book widget, order book, just like this, right? The same thing is going to go to the app. The app is going to the server. The server is going to find the consumer and routes everything to the app, right? So the app is a single WebSocket connected to 
the server and the app will multiplex all the messages to the correct panels, right? That's that. So we are using um, as a protocol on the actors itself, it's going to be proto buffer because that's why that's how uh, Hollywood the framework uses it uses gRPC actually DRPC which is a more optimized version and it's using proto buffers actually V proto buffers which is from Vitesse a zero reflection thingy uh, so it's very very well optimized so it's using proto buffers but uh, the communication between servers over web sockets right that's going to be CBOR C board and I will put some links down in the description if you're interested. It's a C, it's a binary protocol. Uh, I have actually no clue. It's it's just like a little bit like message pack. I just check the link in the description if you want to learn more about that. So it's basically a binary protocol between server and the application because JSON serialization it's just a big of an overhead we don't want, right? <clears throat> so C board is, in my opinion, I did some research. Good, fast, and small. What are we also going to build is basically a scripting uh, engine which runs on the server and which will basically uh, which will run on WASI which is the server uh, site web assembly uh, interpretation I would say so people can actually write scripts um, trading scripts whatever uh, indicators in a language they want they can compile it to web assembly and we will run it on the server and you will basically uh, can build widgets uh, for your scripts Right, and it will all run on the server and it will basically work with any language. That's something that I'm implementing very soon. Again, if you want to learn about that stuff, if you're a trader, if you're a quant, whatever, um, you can buy insider access and you will have a lifetime, uh, informa lifetime updates of the code base and own it. To talk a little bit more about timescale DB, so you can see this is the one second chart. We do not store information for the one second because it's like, it's the one second. So if we go to the one minute, for example, boom, you're gonna see that it's going, you see each time that I'm actually dragging, it's gonna query more and more data, right? We're not gonna query everything at once. We're gonna query ranges of candles and heat maps and all that stuff. Uh, the moment we, behind the scenes, you know what I mean, off screen. So let me auto here. You can see right now we have beautiful one minute. Uh, either my server stopped, so don't worry about the gaps because my, uh, I just uh, turned off my server. Uh, we can actually scale it up to the five minutes, right? You can see this is five minutes. We can scale it up to uh, one hour, for example. You can see this is from data from yesterday, I guess. Right? You can even go to the daily if we want. Boom, you can see. It's all working pretty fine, and it's all timescale DB behind the scenes that actually uh, samples my time frames. Pretty amazing if you ask me. Uh, we can have multiple charts on the screen as well. For example, Ethereum here, boom. Now Ethereum is also running. So another thing that I wanted to show you guys is this is the desktop app application, right? But uh, I also made it that we can compile this to WebAssembly. And let me show you this real quick. So um, what I can do is make Wasm S, right? Which basically will compile everything to WebAssembly and host this uh, on a port, which is 8081. And let me open up this thing. Um, that's going to be a local host 881. So connect to the server. So now you can see that this is actually running on uh, the web. It was not that straightforward because, uh, for example, WebSockets, um, you cannot just use Gorilla, which we actually, I use all the time. Gorilla WebSocket, pretty good, amazing package. Uh, you should check it out. I will put the link down in the description. But the problem is um, there are some stuff that cannot be compiled to WebAssembly there, right? So I'm using another web, uh, another WebSocket package for that. It's going to be the uh, Coder WebSocket. I think it was from N. Hoyer back in the day, not sure, but somebody else picked it up. And right now it's the Coder slash WebSocket link will be in the description that can be compiled to WebAssembly. So on the back end, on all the actors uh, for the consumers, we use uh, Gorilla. But for our application, we use Coder WebSocket because that's uh, pretty much compiles perfectly to WebAssembly, right? Another thing you need to take in consideration if you build this to WebAssembly uh, is that, um, yeah, it needs to be very well optimized, especially uh, for garbage collection and all that stuff. So um, you can see the heat map and all that stuff. It, it's pretty intensive, right? Even on WebAssembly running perfectly fine. That's because, um, yeah, I did a lot of optimizations uh, using sync pools between renders and all that stuff. So we actually do not create garbage. Um, yeah, and it works pretty pretty fine. The 
could be some more optimizations here and there uh, but first things first and uh, i think it's already performing very well so that's pretty good because uh like figma and all these other drawing tools they all use WebAssembly. Uh, so i mean this should work fine right let me know what you think about that comparing to WebAssembly. Pretty cool. Uh, so now I have a desktop version, a WebAssembly version. If you have more questions, feel free to jump into the Discord community. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video. And uh, again, a little bit of a marketing, but I have no sponsor, so I sponsor myself. If you want to learn how this is built, you can. It's not a course. It's a, sim a hybrid course, uh, but you have the source code. You can learn from it. You're going to uh, be invited to a private Discord channel and where everybody's just discussing and, and can learn about uh, this stuff. If you're a coder or if you're a trader or or both, right? Feel free to join, link in the description. And uh, I'm looking forward to see you in the next video. Peace and love.